all right welcome so for our first video of mastercam training we're going to be going over the user interface so we have a good understanding of the user interface before we get started with anything okay so this is going to be basically part one of two videos for the user interface the first video right here i'll be going over the interface as if you are new to mastercam in the second video i'll be going over the user interface as if you are a returning user and basically going over the differences between version X9 and beyond that, before that basically, to the new version of Mastercam and what those differences are. So let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, this area right here is called your graphical area. So that's where your part will be, where you see all the toolpath and do all the work, okay? This takes up most of the space obviously, and where your part will be located at all time, all right? So on the right side over here, you're gonna see these little bubbles that are transparent whenever you move your mouse over them they appear when you move your mouse away they disappear those are called the quick mask toolbars and they're very nice for whenever you want to select either one entity or all the entities of a certain feature for example this one is for points if you want to select all the points you would select the left side of the bubble or the top left whatever you want to call it and if you only want to select one point you would select the bottom right so all the points is top left only one of them is the bottom right same thing with all of these for the lines circles splines and all of them all right so right above your part is this little bubble right here also transparent whenever you move your mouse away now that's called the heads up toolbar that's also something new to mastercam and uh, it's a very nice feature that they've received from a software called solidworks if you're familiar with any designing software that is the most used software in the industry and it's called SOLIDWORKS. They have this, but they don't have it transparent. So this is very nice that they've made it transparent. This way you can see your part and focus on your part and not really uh, seeing these little bubbles popping out everywhere, okay? And they've also included over here all the selection features right here, as well as the auto cursor toolbars. And then we'll learn how to use those later on, but they're very nice because they allow you to really select a feature that you're trying to select over here and then come back to the part and select it so it's a very small distance between these two over here and that's why they've made it here and removed it from the menu bar now talking about the menu over here let's go up top and see what this is so this is actually also new to mastercam and this is the menu with sub menus now this is called the ribbon bar all together this is something that mastercam have gotten from software called microsoft obviously everybody almost is familiar with that and if you have opened up any version of uh, Office, which is uh, 2010 and beyond, you will notice that this is very similar. For every menu button, you're going to see this ribbon bar uh, pop up to the bottom of that, okay? And we start from the left side, for example. For Home, you have all the regular features for, for copy-paste, for example. Now, here's some attributes where you can switch your line colors, uh, even your surface solid colors and geometry colors. Uh, some organize, uh, you can organize a few things and um, delete entities, uh, displaying things, analyze, add-ins. So these are some very basic features that they have. And as you can see, every one of them is split into its own category. And even under attributes, whenever you see this little symbol right here, you can expand it for a few more features, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that. Under wireframe, these are all the features for creating any kind of wireframe, whether it's points, lines, arcs, splines, and shapes, okay? Surfaces, this is where you would create your surfaces. Uh, obviously, there's some simple creation, simple surfaces. You can create some uh, flat boundaries, some loft, uh, so modify them as well, and change some views. The solid tab is for creating all the solids, so similar to surfaces, but uh, creating solids. Model prep is where you basically make some changes to whatever you've created in your solid or surfaces. You can uh, do fillets over here and change colors as well. Under drafting, this is where you can change a lot of uh, um, drafting. For example, you can do a lot of dimensioning, uh, ordinates, uh, annotations uh, to your drawings, uh, regeneration, and you can modify as well. Transform, this is where you can transform a lot of your tool, a, a lot of your geometry. For example, uh, when I created the geometry for this, I transformed it all the way to the bottom of the surface right here uh, to create another one all the way to the bottom. So I'm not creating the same thing at the bottom. So a lot of these things, I uh, will learn how to use them later on, but you basically take a geometry and you either rotate it around, creating a bunch of them all the way around in a circle like I've done all around over here, 
uh, or you can mirror uh, a geometry you can uh, offset for example as well machine so this is where you come to select your machine and start creating your toolpath you come over here first this is one of your first steps that you do uh, and select whether it's a mill that you're using a lathe mill turn wire router and design now obviously mill uh, this category includes the 3d mill and the multi-axis okay and uh, from there you can the, create a job setup you can uh, create a machine definition as well uh, create your uh, simulator uh, if you expand that as well there's more options for that okay for the sh setup sheet we'll have a video on that as well uh, machine simulation as well and we'll learn how to use that uh, probably not in this video in detail but I will be going over the machine simulation on this DVD briefly so you guys know how to navigate that as well all right so for the view this is where you can control most of your views you can switch from the top view right view front isometric uh, you can zoom in and unzoom uh, you can um, move to a wireframe or shaded if you want to change it you can even have metallic plastic or glossy colors all right and a few more features all uh, under the view tab and last but not least is the toolpath so this is where all your toolpaths are located you can see 2d mill 3d multi-axis over here and you can actually expand those to whatever you want okay and as you create your machine so if, if, uh, for example if I go to my machine and select lathe that will actually change my toolpath over here to the lathe toolpath and you can expand any of those by either going down the arrow over here to all the features or expand that to see all the features under the 2d mill now a very nice thing about this ribbon bar is that it's actually all customizable you can right click anywhere over here and go customize quick access toolbar and you will see this come up you can come over here to customize ribbon and you will see these are all your menu items home wireframe surface home wireframe surface you can expand those and expand the subcategories and you can actually add some features to them uh, a very nice thing that I've seen people do, especially people at Mastercam, is come over here basically under the toolpath and change some of that as well. And change some of the toolpath and uh, basically create their own menu that way and um, you know the way that they want to see it. Some people like to only see the 2D toolpath if they don't have uh, multi-axis, for example. So they'll get rid of the multi-axis and they'll expand all of the to uh, toolpath over here or all the features so they take over the entire uh, ribbon. All right, so this is very nice. It's uh, expandable. And one last thing I wanted to show you about this is that if you double click on any of those menu items, it will basically dock down or it will minimize. So if you double click it again, it will pop up. Now, if you double click it to minimize and you go and click something, uh, it will expand. But then when you click away, you'll notice that it actually goes back and minimize. Another way to do that is clicking this button right here. You will see it expanding and retracting. All right. So let's go over here to the left side. So this is called your toolpath manager. So this is where you basically you create all your toolpath. I won't go over, over it in detail. I will have a video uh, in the intro folder. So basically in the same section uh, of the training, which will explain what this is and what you can do with it. You can see that this actually has subcategories, okay? Uh, and uh, toolpath plane and, and levels and solids. These are not subcategories, I'm sorry. These are just part of that. So you can switch between toolpath the planes and levels and solids. So the planes and levels are actually new to this area. They used to be located right down here, basically in the status bar. And now they moved them uh, to this area right here. You can also dock this area by clicking the auto hide and they will dock to the left side. And now you can go click on it. And if you click away, it will dock back down. Uh, to go to any of them, you can actually just move your mouse over it. You don't need to click it and they will pop up. So I'm gonna, check the pin button right here to make sure that it's going back to normal and we'll go over all of these features and what they do and what they're used for later on and last but not least right here at the bottom this is your status bar so as you can see when you move your mouse around the x and y always change all right and and that's because i can only move in x and y in two dimensions i can't quite move in three dimensions the way that i have it set up now this is where you can change your z if you actually click on it you can change it it's off the screen right now so you can't see it but you can change it to anything that you want and it will update for you. You can also say, so I just changed it to two and you can see it changed to two. This is where you can change it from 2D to 3D and I'll show you what that means. And also here are the views. There's a construction plane, that's what the C plane is. T plane is the tool plane and WCS is the world coordinate system plane. 
And over here on the right, this is where you can switch your view to wireframe if you want uh, or make it shaded. And you can do it to all kinds of wireframe uh, to whatever you want to see and all kinds of shaded as well. All right. So I will keep it at that. So you, you, some of them you might have to turn off and you will notice that they are a little bit lighter blue whenever they are selected. Okay, uh, on top over here, this is very self-explanatory. This is the save, open, print, save as, and then zip to go, where when you're done with your program, you can zip it and send it straight out to an email to a client or whoever you want to send it to. Now, if you click all over here on the file, you will notice almost your entire screen changes, and it's like not you're not even in MasterCam anymore, but you still are. Now, they've gotten that from Microsoft Office as well. This is what they call a backstage menu. So this is a menu basically in the backstage and you do the same things over here. You can open up a new document, um, you know, open up a new one, create a new one, open up a new, uh, a brand new one or an old one, I'm sorry. You can save as, a zip to go, you can convert files from here, print, and this is where your configuration is. So if you uh, are coming back, a returning user, this is how you get to the configuration menu uh, from now on. So if you click on that, it'll go and open up the configuration back in MasterCam, okay? So uh, as you can see, uh, to go back to from here to your MasterCam, all you have to do is click on the back button right here and it will also return back. So this is a quick overview of the menu, uh, what everything is called in the menu. So in the next video, like I said, we'll go over the menu as if you are a returning user. So you can see the differences and we'll go back and forth between MasterCam X9 and MasterCam 2017 so we can compare the differences in between the two.